In this installment, we're going to explore whether or not a mass, under as we have been studying, actually behaves like a, behaves like a simple harmonic motion. So if so, then the acceleration will be op and prop to x. So let's, let's apply Newton's second law to this situation. Well, Newton's second law says the net force is the sum of the forces. And let's look at the forces. Let's look at the instant before release. We have stretched the block out all the way, and we are holding it in place. We have a force applied, and we have the force of the spring, which are equal and opposite. And we know they're equal and opposite because it's not accelerating. We're holding it in place. That's the instant before. Well, the instant afterward, after release, no time has passed, and so, but the applied force has been removed. So the only force acting on it is the force of the spring, the restoring force of the spring, trying to pull it toward the left. So the net force is MA, some mass is being accelerated, and the force that's acting on it is the force on the spring. And the force on the spring is Kx through Hooke's law. Now, we want to make sure we've got our directions correct. So the acceleration we will experience when we release this will be a negative acceleration while there's a positive x. So this formula needs to be corrected for the direction because at the instant it's released, the force that was being applied was positive. The positive displacement will experience a negative acceleration. Now solving for acceleration, we get A equals minus K over M times X. Now what do we know about K? It's a constant. It's called the spring constant, in fact. And the M is constant. The mass of the block isn't changing. Therefore, K over M is constant. So then we have the acceleration is opposite and proportional to x. That seemed to come very quickly. The acceleration is opposite and proportional to x. So indeed it does obey simple harmonic motion. So we were able to show that relatively easy, easily by applying Newton's second law. Next, we want to look at the period more closely. We have another relationship that we know about simple harmonic motion is that the acceleration is opposite and proportional to the displacement. A equals minus omega squared x. And if A equals minus k over m times x, well, the accelerations, the negatives, the x's, therefore, omega squared equals k over m. And then omega must equal the square root of k over m. Now, if we're looking for the period, the equation that we have for period is omega equals 2 pi over t. So rearranging for period, we get the period is 2 pi over omega. And if omega is the square root of m, k of k over m, we have 2 pi all over the square root of k over m. And that then is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Thus, the period of a spring is going to be 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So we are also very easily able to show and derive a relationship for the period of a spring by simply using 
the definitions of simple harmonic motion and the definition of omega.